I'm not voting. But before I tell you why I'm not voting, let me tell you about the very first time that I did vote. I was in kindergarten and my teacher, her name was Miss Saget, and she was a young white lady. And so we had a mock voting. We actually had vote, voting booths inside the classroom. And before we voted, we were programmed by our teacher that it'd be a good idea to vote for Bill Clinton. I think I remember this was a long time ago. She said something like he was so handsome. And now this is how my political ideology was created such a long time ago. Now, after she said vote for Bill Clinton, I don't even remember who his opponent was because I was indoctrinated by my teacher who was so nice and polite and she was also so white. And so my brain has been slanted for the white liberal agenda since I was just a baby. Now let's fast forward to right now. Why do I not want to vote right now? After I got this political education in elementary school, and then my entire life, I went with the first time I voted, I voted with my parents. I had the little pen on this said, I voted, I voted, I voted. But I was told to vote Democrat, and so I did. And when Barack Obama became the uh, presidential nominee, I was instructed to vote black, and I did. And so now, I didn't vote it for these people over my lifetime, and I had no political understanding of what their policies were or how the things I was voting for were going to affect my life. And so my life has been adversely affected by policies that I don't agree with that I supported. Now, I think that I'm supposed to be politically aware. I think that if I go into a voting booth, I, I should know what I'm doing. I think that if you go into a voting booth, you should know what you're doing. Do you know who you're voting for? Do you know why you're voting for them? If you do, hit that comment section and tell me, yeah, I'm voting for Kamala Harris. I bet you are. Tell me why you're voting for Donald Trump, besides the fact that he is a, a rich white man. Tell me why you're voting for Kamala, outside the fact that she is a, a, a person who's pretending to be a black woman because she wants to get the political currency that comes from the black vote. The black vote. I'm out here walking through a black community and you know what I see, man? I see a whole bunch of things getting torn down. It doesn't look like the best neighborhood. It's not the worst, but I can see gentrification. I actually just passed it up. Trees be knocked down, houses. These are small single home houses. And I wanna know what politician in America is representing these people. What politician in America is actually representing me? Let's talk about it. Do you wanna have hard conversations? Because they say that they're not going to do anything specific for black folks. Kamala Harris said that she's specifically not going to do anything for black folks. But you passed the Stop Asian Hate Crime Bill. The Joe Biden administration did that. How could you do that so effectively? But when it comes to helping other communities, you ain't had no help from me. And that's extremely frustrating. And I don't think politics is supposed to be frustrating. So if you're not going to do one thing, then you have a legitimate option of something else, right? So if I'm not going to vote, then what's the solution? Guerrilla, social guerrilla warfare. What's that? What social guerrilla warfare? It's using media to uh, reframe this whole political idea. Every four years, we go vote for a person who's not going to change our material lives. And specifically for men, black men looking at myself, we need a political agenda in America. And so I shouldn't invest my uh, time into a political party that's certainly not going to benefit me. I think that's crazy. And so instead of doing something crazy, I think it's time to do something smart. I think black folks are smart. I think men are smart. I think more specifically, black men are highly intelligent. And they can look at a situation that's not benefiting them and make a better decision. Because I think we're tired of living in poverty. I think we're tired of looking at the neighborhoods and our storefronts and they're all beat up, huh? <laughs> Public transportation where I come from, this is, this is what it is. And then when you see the trash and when you see just how this whole system is this is where we shop at this is where we eat at this is how we travel <laughs> i think so many houstonians deserve better and i would like to have the conversation on how we we really create a political strategy to gain some power in america how do we do that by making content i think content creators are the new revolutionaries I think that bus and that truck are extremely loud, but I think that we can make it and we can get through this. I think that we can get through this turbulent political climate together. If we work together, we can change this whole thing. Now, what are we going to do, right? First, we're going to talk about the political action that needs to happen in America. Yeah. For men in America, we need to stop child support. How do we stop child support? 10 million men in america could abolish child support oh so easily i see the thing 
that I'm talking about. Man, when I say gentrification, you don't understand. If I walk through poverty and then you see that they build big, beautiful homes for people that don't look like me, that should absolutely change the way that you feel about the situation. We had to get off that main road because I don't want to hear buses and trucks going by negative. I really want to see the material condition of a black community. I was sitting outside in my parents' house yesterday, right? And as I was sitting outside in my parents' house, some Asians were across the street. Now these Asians are new to the neighborhood. We've been in that neighborhood for years. And so these Asians, they came outside and they was like cutting down trees. But as they saw us, you could see the, the fear in their eyes. You move into a neighborhood around black folk and you don't want to be around black folk. That's offensive to me. And you look, and so the immigrants are coming to America and the property that, that, that they had, Mexicans were working on the property, Chinese people bought the property and they're moving out the black folks. Yep, that's the reality for black America. And so when you ask a, a political, uh, when you ask Donald Trump or Kamala Harris, what's your agenda for black folks, they ain't got now. And so everybody in America, y'all all voting. I'm voting for a person that's gonna represent you. You're voting for a person that's gonna represent you. And ain't nobody voting for me. In America, ain't nobody finna vote for black. And if you can answer that question for me, tell me why that is, man, I'd appreciate it. You tell me why everybody in America, they we care about every group of people except for black folk. And I know some white folks out there like, well, what about me? What about me? There ain't nowhere you can, there, there's nowhere you can go in America where you ain't accepted and appreciated, huh? <laughs> there ain't nowhere a white person can go in America where you're not accepted and appreciated. But for me, in my own neighborhood, I can't find peace and solace around people who look like me because they move us out and bring someone else in and no one cares. So when I say, I don't want to vote for that type of system. When I say I want social guerrilla warfare tactics and to make more better videos so that when it comes to my neighborhood, people just can't come over here and put up cameras to try to see if there's any crime happening. Yeah, there's a crime that's happening. It's great. There's a crime that's happening. It is. Black people are being pushed out and other groups are being prioritized. And so when I cast my ballot, I don't want to cast my ballot for people to live in those why I ain't got nowhere to go. I don't want to cast a ballot against black folk. I don't want to cast a ballot to continue to drop bombs around the world. <laughs> I don't think it's a good idea for me to drop a ballot and that ballot says, yes, Kamala Harris, go bomb the Middle East. Yes, President Trump, go bomb somewhere else around the world. I think those are terrible ideas. I don't want no parts of it. I think we need a more better conversation is what it means to be free people in America. Don't you want to be a powerful person in America? I do. And so we got to have conversations on political power. That we're going to create a, we're going to have a 10 million man march. I think that's going to be the most effective piece of power in the history of America. I think America needs to be reminded that men built this, men sustained this. We just saw it right now with the ports. Man, if men don't show up and do these hard jobs in America, we don't got no America. And so if poor men in America don't recognize how powerful they are, they're going to continue to betray the American man. They're going to continue to betray black folk. And so hey, if you're a black man with some power, if you're a white man, you ain't got no power. Let's be powerful. It's called collective unity. It's called the 10 million man march. And we're just going to turn up on social media. Share this, screen record this, and give it to everybody you know. Because it's time that uh, we ain't got no more empty lots. Huh? No more empty lots. We finna build blocks. And we finna make the black American strong again. The greatest American alive, baby. You are the greatest American alive.